Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Thought I'd put together a quick series of videos uh, covering blending between forms or blending between shapes or transitions between shapes. So first up is uh, transition between circle and a lozenge. So I'll just skip through the, I've uh, got a couple of files here uh, with sort of three different ways of doing this and my learning along the way. So I'll just skip over into this other file to start with, um, with my setup. So I've started by creating a lozenge form using the slot tool in a sketch. And then I've created a plane which is going to have the circle on it, which is 50 millimeters away. And the circle is tangent to this top line on the slot. So I want the circle in the slot, the center line to be, uh, to be equal thickness. Uh, now, because I don't want to just run um, I don't want a G1 connection here between the, the arc and the line. I'm going to uh, create a, um, a G2 blend in here. So basically what I've done is I've converted this entity out of the slot, out of the lozenge, which is the arc. And then I've equally, I've put in the line from the, um, from the lozenge as well and I've controlled where they stop and start with a couple of angles and between that angle I've created a degree 5 Bezier spline so if you go insert style spline Bezier and then the degree 5 so it will have 6 points so I've gone 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points and I've made each of the segments of the control polygon equal distance as you can see there, if I turn on the curvature graph, you can see what's happening here. The curvature is going down from nothing to zero because there's a line and it's transitioning uh, to the curvature of the arc. And I've fiddled around with these dimensions here just to try and get it sort of with no hump. Well, less of a hump there. So, yeah, 6 degrees from this side and 30 from the other. And just turn the curvature off. What you are losing, obviously this isn't an arc anymore in here, this blended section. So if you look in here, there's the, uh, there's the arc. So we're going slightly inboard of the arc. I don't think anybody would be able to notice. So just over that distance you're losing a bit of material from a foot or an arc. But what you're gaining is a smooth blend. Okay, I'm going to exit that sketch. So then I've extruded that sketch backwards as a quadrant because I'm going to mirror it over twice. And I've extruded the arc. And I've created a line. From each end, and I've created a blend edge, which again, it's curvature continuous on each end, but because we're blending into a line, uh, these don't have to have a curvature continuous um, constraint, they just have to be collinear to what you're blending to. So that's a degree five spline, six points, and uh, in this case, I've just made all of the control polygon segments um, equal length. And the first one I've tried out is a boundary surface where you uh, one direction we have our center line in the blend sketch, in the second direction. Um, uh, use the selection manager to select the three edges of the extrude here. And then on the other end, it's tangent to the extruded arc. 100% uh, tangent influence on both of those. So I mirror those over twice and then to knit them together. This is what we get. It's a curvature. It's, it's out of my hands what happens in here because I've obviously... Pick those three segments and the boundary blends just blending between. Um, zebra. I mean, it 
looks like it flows okay across there. Um, I, again, I don't have any control in here. And because our input curves are G2, um, the boundary blend appears to have um, matched the other geometry, G2, without having to specify curvature continuous. Okay, so if you did want to have more control in here, um, another way of doing this would be to create a, a planar surface in here, because that's planar there, uh, and this circle here is the same height this point is on that plane. So I'll show you that one now. Okay, so I've created this uh, planar surface here. Uh, and again, this curve here is built the same way as the blend curve along the side, which is a style spline, Bezier curve, degree five, which means it's got six points. Um, these control polygon segments are collinear here for this. Entity and again this end the collinear with this entity here. So curvature continuous constraint. And then I've created a boundary surface. Uh, this time only two segments uh, in this end here using the selection manager. Um, to the arc on this end, tangent to face here and normal to profile here. But there is a little bit of a problem with doing this, being I can put a cross section in here which is curvature continuous to this planar face, except because this arc here comes up to zero on that surface, I can't make it curvature continuous there. So sort of mucked around with this, but I couldn't get this to work very well without reading the tangent connection here, as you can see, how there's a, there's a, a sharp kink in the uh, zebra stripes. Okay, so this brought me on to the third option. Maybe if this isn't a planar face and this surface comes down around the arc a bit, I'll swap over into this part now. So what I've done is I've created a 3D sketch from this entity here, again same Bezier curve style spline degree 5 with 6 points, um, these two segments of the control polygon are collinear to this entity and at this end um, because any ISO curve through this extruded arc is basically vertical or horizontal I've just made these um, control polygon segments along the z-axis. Okay, this is a 3D sketch. And then I've made it a distance away from the center line there, so I can tweak this. Okay, so that would be a curvature continuous connection if there was an ISO curve through here. If you inserted a face curve at this point, that'd be curvature continuous. So, and a distance uh, control here. This entity of the poly, these four control polygon segments are equal in length. So I only need one dimension here to um, control that. Depends what you want. Okay, and then I've created a boundary surface which is tangent to this uh, face, tangent to this face, normal to profile to the center line, and this boundary is free. 100% tangent influence on both directions. I've knitted these together, and then I've created a boundary surface, much like in the previous example, except this isn't a planar face anymore. So the surface is Tangent using selection manager, I've picked these two edges here, um, one edge here, normal to profile for this, this curve, and tangent to the edge of our surface here. I haven't made this curvature continuous because if I do, let's see where are we, this one, 
you get the old uh, SolidWorks wiggle happening. So I've just left it tangent. Okay, so I've knitted these together, mirrored them around, and the last knit uh, has got merge entities to merge these planar faces together, and also the extruded arc faces. We don't have surface breaks. Okay, and then I've just capped those with a couple of planar surfaces, uh, knitted everything together and thickened it. So this result, it's quite like the first result, except I've got control over what goes over here in here now, you know. Um, in the first option, where I just blended right from front to back, or from the lozenge to the arc, this just does whatever the, you know, SolidWorks decides uh, it's going to do. So now I've done it this way. I'll just roll back before then. I have control over this surface here. So I might want to make that surface larger. Um, depending on the form. I mean, obviously that doesn't look great. But depends on what you want it to do. So you've got more control over the form. Okay, so that's the first quick video of looking at um, transitions or blends between various forms in SolidWorks. Uh, if you find this video useful, can you please subscribe to my channel? And uh, thanks again, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Bye-bye.